Hello, this is Rebirth the Legend here with another replay analysis. We're going to be looking at an Alchemist game today by... I actually don't know his name in the game. Um, we'll see in a second, though. He wants to know... Let's quickly read the post. After nearly making its way back to 3k after falling down to 2.5, came across this 8 game losing streak. Then finally, when I had decent stars, Alchemist, I ended up losing the game 17 to 58. I don't think I can blame my teammates since they played their best and a lot better than me, but what could I have done is Alchemist to win this game. Okay. Um, first, I did notice you had kind of a weird skill build. Um, Phantom Assassin. So, right now, I know you end up on this team, so you're one of these two guys. I wouldn't say this really calls for an Alchemist mid. I mean, these. Alchemist is a pretty farm intensive hero, regardless of whether you do the farming build like a Radiance or if you do a fighting build with like a quick solar crest. Because <sighs> you have both a PA and an anti mage, and you pick an Alka into it. And in this case, I would have gone like for a full fighting build, and you go like some weird hybrid thing. Um, now back in the day, I think like I think Radiance is pretty core on an Alchemist that's supposed to be farming a lot. Uh, even if you don't go the full Manta Octarine build, which I'll maybe I'll make another video for, because I have quite a few games of playing it, um, <clears throat> and I'm pretty good at it. But um, so let's see what these starting items are. Runchy's recruiting some real trouble. I know, Morty. Just follow my lead. It's probably okay. I, I, maybe a mid bristle. It's kind of weird. Yeah, mid bristle, I would think. Safe lane choke, off lane breaker. Um, anyway, uh, this ionization is okay. If you're against a range person, starting with the poor man shield tango is usually pretty good. I think you lost a little gold, so you wouldn't have been able to perfectly afford that though. So, I mean, that, that's okay too. But another alternative is definitely open with a poor man shield, which will give you basically one more armor. And, um, gives you 100% block chance for 20, which is pretty nice. Um, what I'd say is, I never show where I'm, what rune I'm going to, until like the last, like, five seconds. Because, like, showing right here, like this, it's gonna make their whole team just run towards the fucking rune. Unless they're trying to, like, fake him out. Cause like anytime I show, yeah, you see, look at them, they're, they're hoofing it. I, I think they saw you though, yeah, they see you here too. So that Spirit Breaker, it's kind of actually annoying when they have teams that have stuns like this, so you're not going to get this rune. If they play this even remotely well, yeah, you're not going to get it. And that's because, like, you showed. You see, exactly as I said, it's going to have to happen. As soon as you show and they see you, they're just like, better contest this rune, and they get both runes, which is kind of shitty. Um, but anyways, there's basically two ways to play him. You can rush, like... Tread Solar Crest and try and fight. Um, or you can get um, Radiance Travels and you can farm. Uh, since you have an anti mage and like a PA, I mean, if you if you trust in them, then the smart thing to do, uh, you also just miss two creeps for no reason. Um, since you have the AM and the PA and a CK and a Dark Seer, logically it says you should do the fighting build. I suppose. But that's like, that's involving you being really selfless. Like, honestly, if you're in pubs, I probably would really never do it. Like, realistically, your team's probably not going to use the map well enough. And if you're playing the. And you can play, like, the, the Radiance build, like Radiance, Manta, and all that shit, like, much more selflessly. Like, once I have my Manta. Like, in this game, let's look at it. Like, you're basically not killable, right? If you just use your Manta Illusions to farm and your hero safely farms like these two camps, you can just farm really aggressively and create tons of space. Um, so I'm not going to say like trying to do a fighting build is, is wrong. Uh, I wouldn't even bother doing it in pubs, unless I'm like in a coordinated 5 stack. Uh, so since... Yeah, you just gotta spam the acid down. Uh, you should max acid in this lane, because honestly, you're gonna fuck up this juggernaut if you do. Um, melee versus melee alchem or matchups for alchemists are like really good. Just keep right clicking him in this. Like you can trade this right now. Like that's how hysterical it is. Like when you're against someone like an Ember or even that Jug, like his spin is kind of scary. See, like this is this is greedy. 
Like, you're gonna have a Jug who can man up on you with the spin, and being able to keep him low with acid is gonna be really helpful. Them taking that Kerr is really annoying for you. Ooh, like you saw how badly you hurt him. The dot on this increases by quite a lot because it's also an armor down. And Jug's like base 2 3 armor. Yeah. So he has 6 armor right now. He's got no he's got no shield either. So a poor man shield would be nice for doing those trades as well. He's not leveling spin, which you're kind of lucky about. So he can't trade as well with you as he'd like in the acid. So I think it's silly. Like if you're Admitting a juggernaut, it's kind of dumb. But yeah, I think you see a lot of people who just max grieve, uh, greed, and I pretty much never do, honestly. Uh, situationally, it can be okay to get more levels in it, but early on, I think at the very least, you should go 2 0 1. And then if you think the lane calls for it, you can get more levels in greed. I pretty much never do, though. I value zoning out and hurting their safe laner quite a lot. Here you should have bottle crow too. Like if you know you're not gonna get a rune, then you need to bottle crow. What a douche. Um, so you should have used your full bottle, kept the courier around, and then bottle crowed it while getting your boots and probably a TP. Pretty much, I always make sure I'm carrying boots and a teleport scroll. It's, it's really important for when you get ganked. Like if you look at this, once the venge stun goes off. You can TP out. They do event since he's only he doesn't not leveling spin, right? Yeah, he's not leveling spin. He's got his healing thing because he's a dumbass. Um, once they event stun, you can just spin it. You can just TP out. That's their only, and, or they have a spirit breaker charge too. Like if spirit breaker charges you and hits you, you can just try TPing out. I mean, 17% chance that you that you fail, but it's something you have to be willing to try sometimes. <laughs> So that's definitely a huge problem. Like you need to be bottle crowing or securing runes. And you could have easily crowed, gotten your boots and your TP, and upgraded this. I actually upgrade my own courier too. Like if your pubs aren't gonna do it, just do it. Who the hell cares? Like I, I, I find bottle crowing so important in the games that require it. Oh, we're gonna get double rune? We're not gonna get double rune. The teams are such little bitches about securing runes against the fucking alchemists. It's really annoying. Okay, like here's where you bottle crow again too. Like just use use your full bottle and crow. Uh, I mean this isn't that low of an MMR game, I think it sits around 2500 or 3k. But like I imagine you should know what bottle crowing is, you can put your bottle on the courier, send it to the fountain, send it back to you. Um, but anyway, I think your, your item build's kinda silly, like if you get the radiance you kinda wanna be farming. And like, you can fight with it to some degree, but if you really, really want to fight, then you shouldn't be getting a Radiance. Like, you do some weird hybrid build, and... Well, it's not like the worst thing. It's like, if you just chose one thing, I think it would have been more efficient. I know that just by looking at the Dota buff. I ever saw you had a Radiance and an SNY, which is like, what? Because <clears throat> like a Solar Crest, um, like Tread Solar Crest, like gives you a fair amount of survivability like a huge armor it's like these two have really high armor down and they have good physical and good magical burst on their team it's like that's something you like need to be aware of and take into account so if you went like tread solar crest sny or something that would give you like huge armor and like huge ability to kill people and you could build tanky or build an ac after that or something and you just focus on just fucking people up Like, you still haven't committed on anything at this point. Like, I guess if I were looking at this game, let's see, let's look at this anti mage. It's doing okay. It's PA. Also doing, I guess, okay. I mean, you're not that behind in kills right now. See, if you have a TP right now, you might be able to save. You might have been able to save her, too. See, that's where more levels of acid would be nice, too. But let's go back to the two of them dying. Like, I'm not usually a big advocate of, like, trying to TP. Also, if you want to fight, you should only really get, like, one or two levels of greed and levels of concoction. Because, like, you should also, you should know that your laning phase is kind of weak. But your your rotations can be super strong. She's getting chased here for a fucking while. You guys just have no actual supports, which is really silly. Because if you TP'd here with acid and a concoction on that, like, first rotation, 
probably would have killed this thing. Because you'll bring him to like zero, uh, you bring him to like zero armor and then you chuck a concoction and stun him while the tower is hitting him. Like it does a, it does a lot of damage. This guy's, I know, I think I saw him get an octane in this game. Is that what we saw? No, he's just bad. Okay, whatever. 19, 5, and 29. That's like two items. That's pretty shitty. <laughs> That's the thing. Like lower MMR games, people don't know how to snowball properly. But like, I like I know you're sitting for the radiance here. But like, you should have just committed to like the full rat mode. Man. Hello? Can anyone hear me? It's a killer. Which isn't wrong. Like I don't. Here. Like when I'm mitting Alc, I don't oh, tend to really TP too often before my radiance. And by that, I I mean I probably never have, honestly. Cause you just don't contribute a lot. You contribute like an acid spray. Unless there's some crazy dive, I'm probably not going to TP for it. Because all, all you do is throw down acid. Double kill. Oh, man. All you're going to do is throw down acid and like hope for the best. This build is absolutely oh, retarded. I've never seen attack. anyone max healing ward first. I think it was in response to your acid spray. Oh, but that's why you're able to get it to like max greed. But like that's too greedy. I think. Like I really wouldn't do that in most games. That was rough. I saw you missed that creep. But it's one of those ones where it's like, uh, I gotta hope the tower hits it low, because my one shot's definitely not gonna get the damage. That's a really slow relic, too. Like, considering you max greed, with like a 12 minute relic isn't really that good. Oh, that was an almost. That was almost oh boy, nice. So when he has, like, you have to know Juggernaut's kill like threshold, right? You can't do that. Well, I guess you had that, which kind of made it a little better. But if you if you pop that initially when you wanted to run away, you probably would have lived. So like, you can't run from a Juggernaut when he's got his ult. Cause you're gonna fucking die. I think he actually doesn't even use his mom when he ults you. Or you probably would have been in worse shape. Let's slow it down. So like, as soon as you decide you want to leave this creep wave. Hey, you see this gank coming? I say, yeah, okay, I'm clicked on you. Okay, your ult's wearing out. <coughs> <coughs> Another thing, if you feel threatened in a lane, you can't walk up when your ult's down. That's like, there's this dumb video going around. It's like, oh, alchemists are dumb, and that's how you catch them. So you lost half your HP before you popped that, so only one of the spins got diverted. You could have gotten lucky, you could have gotten unlucky, but the chances were definitely better if you did that correctly. If you had a poor man shield here, you might have also lived. That's a... It's a petty thing, but I'm gonna put it out there. A poor man shield probably would have saved you. I don't think he used his mom when ulting you. So the reason you use so the reason mom's good on jug is because he can attack during his omni slash. Like you get right clicks off too. And when you have a mom active, it increases the amount of attacks you get. So he just ults you, I think. Yeah, so that was a misplay on his part too. He should have popped the mom first. He pops it while he's tower diving. So his screw up here could result in you living if you had a poor man shield, or if you popped your your illusion rune to leave. Like I don't know if you planned that out. The only reason you could have been able to retreat like that is because you had the rune. Otherwise, trying to retreat against a jug out of a creep wave is going to result in you dying. Like it's easier to just put down acid and try and fight him and like force him into a spin or something. And also having a TP would have saved you. Like if you decided, like you saw there was none dying there too. What a mess. Like, you saw there was none dying there, too. Like, if you had the TP, you would have the option to just TP out. Like, they don't have anything that can interrupt the TP except for the Venge and the Spirit Breaker. And we lost our Relic, too. It's actually, a, it's actually like an okay amount of creeps, but that death hurts you so much. You lost... Like, think about how much gold you lost. So, we were on, we were on the path for, like, what, an 11-minute relic or something? Which I'll take that back. That was, like, an okay time for relic. Let's go before you die. Oh, 
Okay. So how much gold are we gonna lose here? We're gonna lose 270. We're gonna feed the juggernaut a fair amount. So like that's both of you fucking up there. That resulted in this being close. If you had the poor man's shield or if you used the illusion rune properly, you might not have died. And if he used his mom, he probably would have killed you much easier. But like you can you could you have to intend or like your opponents are gonna make mistakes and obviously you don't wanna play under the presumption that they're gonna fuck up. But like being able to capitalize on their mistakes is also important. Like that's something I wanna stress. Like you don't wanna you don't wanna play like your opponent's retarded, you know? You don't wanna play like the perfect players, you don't wanna just be like, okay, well if they're retarded then this will work, right? Like, that's not a good way to play. Um, but like rolling with the punches and just knowing like what you could have done there to make it better. It's just something you have to like acknowledge. You gotta you wanna ult preemptively too, because if you get stunned before you ult, you're losing a lot of heal. So like here's something important to think about. Um <clears throat> her stun's gonna do like three hundred damage. It's quite it's quite a hefty hefty nuke. Your HP is only like I don't know why it took me long to register that, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> so if we look at someone like Advantage and see what her nuke damage is, if you're ulted already when she nukes you, that's two seconds of heal you're going to have while you're nuked, pretending that there's not a chain stun. And if there's a chain stun, like, it compounds. So ulting preemptively before you get in a fight means that you're going to heal while you're chain stunned. So she's going to stun you for around two seconds, and in that time you can heal 100 HP. And, like, that could be a huge difference in, like, living or not. Um, so that's something you want to consider, because they, they didn't go on you here, so it worked out fine. But they could have chosen something. They could have <laughs> chosen to do something else. Okay, we're going to get our relic. We should kill this camp right now, too. Yeah, that's fine, too. You push this out. Also good. Oh, man, so like, what? you see how much that death cost you? It cost you like 45 seconds of farming, and it cost you um, and it cost you like 300 gold. So like the the net cost on that death is probably more like six seven hundred gold. Which is kind of a lot. It's probably actually even more. Just say we're losing 300. Like, Nakamas should be farming more gold than 400 in a minute, even before your radiance. It's not hard. She just should be trying to push this as hard as possible right now. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Cool. Jeez, middle so you can back up and farm the camps. Like, you need to be efficient, too. Like, why do we just TP here? Far you could have farmed these two camps out. This is nice, though. You get to farm this tombstone. Nope, you don't get to farm it. That is unfortunate, too. You actually get gold from tombstone kills and stuff. I would have pushed that like another creep wave and then TP'd back. Or farmed out their woods and then TP'd back. Like, you have to be greedy and really efficient on an alchemist. Like, you want to see really good alchemist players, you have to look at like how efficient they are with like their farming during, during certain times and how they choose to split push and like what they get from things. So another thing I don't understand is like, why don't you have treads right now if you wanted to get treads? Like I guess like, oh we're rushing a radiance, but like treads give you a lot, and the reason you don't upgrade your, the reason you're not upgrading your boots right now is because when you get the radiance, it's really efficient to have travels. But if you like, you want to fight and get the treads, like, why not get the treads already? Radiance top tower has fallen. middle tower is under attack. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Oh, Radiant's top tower is under attack. And we'll save that energy. Oh, I not feel good. So that's definitely like a slow radiance. And uh, I think you're creeped well in laning phase, and then like after that, you just weren't too efficient. Cause you should be able to push out a creep wave and farm your jungle at like the same time. I don't think I pointed it out as well, cause there was some action going on. But like when you're up here, you could have pushed in that wave, farm this camp, and then you have a ward here, so you would have been able to see them coming to kill you and just like left. 
Um, there's a spirit breaker, so you can't. You gotta play that like a little safer, because if they end up charging you, uh, that can like screw up your, your split push ratty rat plans. Oh my God. Four, four in a row because like you can't dip into a tree line and try and like TP out when the vent has vision and can just stun or swap you. Top tower is under well, even if you have ult, the Venge blows or swap and then stuns, like you, should be able, you should be able to get out. Like here, honestly, at this point in the game, since you just got your Radiance now, like, you just know, like, you have to go into rap mode now. And getting Travel's Radiance is what you, or sorry, Travel's Manta is what you want to do. Like, your decision to build an SNY is fucking dumb, honestly. Because you know you're behind right now, and, like, fighting them is really scary. And you want to be able to rat them and fight them defensively. Like, your team rats really well. You have an anti-mage and you have you. Um, I mean, this guy's obviously really far behind. They're kind of far ahead. Holy crap, but, like, having the Radiance is good. And then, honestly, unless you... Are you just going to buy treads right now? It is, like, kind of a tough call, but, like... If you choose like treads and whatever now and you don't win these fights, then you're just really far behind. While the ratting is probably like a safer way to go. Also, you're fighting outside your base right now, which is really dumb. It's okay, so this is fucking stupid and this is your fault. So like right now, what you want, they're really fucking far ahead. Like you can see it's 7 to 24, right? You can, I'm sure you can predict that you, your team's at a disadvantage. Like even with an alchemist, you're at a huge gold disadvantage. Because your team fucking sucks. You start this fight here. You have a level one concoction. Like, what are you doing? And you get. But now you're fighting into like a tombstone. You get ulted. Hurts being brought. You guys get destroyed. Like, uh, there was no reason for you to throw this stun and force your team into this engagement. Like, this is silly. This is like one of those fights, like, like there's many things in this game that put your team at a disadvantage. But like, you can look at a game and you can look at the issues that compound to create a disadvantage. But there'll always be that one moment where it's like, okay, here's where we lost and there's no way we could come back. And this is going to give them like a, probably a free rax, right? Before a wipe you, they have level 4 healing ward, right? So did you already use it? Yeah, you already used it. So maybe, maybe you won't. Maybe they won't get the tower because you are in quick response. This pistol back's going fucking uh, hard though. Bottom tower is under attack. But like that was that was four kills that didn't need to happen. If you force them, like you see them sitting there, like you can guess that they probably wanted to fight here, right? Like why are they gonna sit four people in bottom lane if they're not looking for this fight? Like we wanna. Oh, I should lower the line. Sorry. Screwed up. Well, like, you see, you see all these people here. You see at least four people here. And you walk out and try and fight them. Like, it's fine to just, like, start a concoction, realize, shit, this was a mistake, chuck it after, like, half a second of channeling, and then just back up. Like, here, they're not in tower range, really. And you chase this to far outside the tower range, you bait your team into this fight that you're going to get destroyed in. Like, they have a fucking leveled up on dying. Max tombstone. You guys just get destroyed. And like, it doesn't look like you're gonna lose this tower here. You might. Let's see. You could just lose another fight here too. No, but you lost like a thousand HP on the tower. So you get a vid, like what's, I, that seems silly. I guess the casual bit boosters for the HP. But like, you can't afford to do that. Like you just need to get travels and rat. Like that, like that's committing to just like lose. So you want to be trying to get things that are going to accelerate your farm and accelerate your ability to like win the game. So their team doesn't handle your illusions too well. So if you got like a radiance and like an octarine or something, like if you got to that point this game, which is something you can get to, like if you're in a good game, you can have it by like mm, 21 minutes probably, 23. You can probably have it by like 21, 23 minutes in like a good game. Um. 
But what that allows you to do is, like, when they're trying to group fill those pushes, even when you're at huge disadvantages like this, you can just open up your illusions, send your illusions at them, like, through the lane. Like, you space them, send them one by one, and just move command them. And you'll do a lot of damage. You'll have to chase the illusions, you'll have to nuke the illusions down, they'll have to kill the fucking illusions that are also doing radiance damage to them. And, like, yeah, they have healing ward, but it's still annoying. And then when they're trying to push, you drop acid. And, like, when you do chip stuff like that, and you're constantly sending illusions at them, you're dropping acid, and they're trying to, like, high ground, it, it has a huge cost on them and their ability to do it. Because acid alone does, like, I think it's, like, 500 damage. Not counting the armor reduction. So when you're bringing a hero, like, Venge down to, like, 3 armor, I'm dying to negative 3 armor. And, like, if you get to the point of having AC, too, like, you'll bring all of their armor to, like, absolutely nothing. Like, even him, 7, 13. You'll bring his armor to nothing. I mean, obviously, you know, they're going to have more armor by that point. So it's not really a, a great comparison. But, like, when you bring someone with 15, 18 armor down to, like, 3 armor, 5 armor, like, that's a huge difference. And, like, I've had plenty of games where I just barely hold a high ground, and we end up winning. And, like, you do that just with, like, a Radiance and, um... Sorry, with like Radiance and Acid Spray, like you can, you're really fucking annoying to push into. Uh, the Octarine definitely helps because everything's on lower cooldown, but like you can do it without that. Just like the Manta or like even just Acid Spray will do it. But like what you're doing right now is just silly. Okay. So like let's see what leads into this because this is bad. Like, okay, you should be trying to communicate with your team, and obviously you can't control them. You just tell your team, hey, sit by towers, fight at towers, and, like, I'll TP back to help. And that's what you try and communicate. It's like playing with an anti-mage when you're behind. It's like, take defensive fights, TP back. Because when they're trying to dive, and they're, like, low HP, and you can TP in, and you just burn them with the Radiance, and all their nukes are on cooldown, like, you're in good shape. Like, that's how you want to fight with Alchemist before you have, like, the Manta and the Octarine and shit. Because you can still get bursted, like, quite hard. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> You can still get bursted, like, really hard. So you don't really want to, like... You don't want to try and, like, force engagements outside of things. Like, they're fighting in, in their woods right now. And, like, here, this is those things where you have to just say no. And you just don't do it. Like, here you could have been farming top. Like, your team kind of does good. You trade, like, one for one here. Then you just get slaughtered by this. And as soon as your rage is down, like, you know you're vulnerable, right? So you need to definitely not be anywhere. Like, let's look at it one more time. Because we'll see when your rage goes down. So your rage has been down for, like, five seconds at this point. A little longer, actually. It's 25 seconds. So it's down now. These are up. Like, I'm not going to say it was your fault entirely. But, like, you shouldn't have been fighting there at all. Like, if your team wants to be dumb and, like, fight over here... See, if you're in a five-man stack, like, I'd say... Okay, maybe you should try and help your team. But, like, in a five-man stack, they should be listening and, like, agreeing on a course of action. And the course of action isn't to fight in your jungle. And if it's pubs, like, you just have to let them make their bad decisions. Like, knowing what you have to do to win a game is really important. And, like, as an alchemist, like, you should just know, like, hey, if I get... If I get 6 slot and I buy Ags for all these idiots, even though none of them have Ags upgrades apart from Darkseer. Okay, we screwed up again here. Uh, so even though none of them have Ags upgrades except for Darkseer, it gives them another 400 HP. It's really nice for all of them, really. And, like, just know that you can make a game, and if this gets to super late game, like, your team destroys them. Like, obliterates them. Like, absolutely shits on them. Like, I can't stress that enough. Like... Part of that's because you have no supports. Part of that is because they have a juggernaut hard carry against a fucking uh, anti mage and a PA. Like he needs like an, he needs so many items and just like doesn't have what he needs. And he's never gonna have what he needs because he bought shitty items and doesn't know how to farm. But like, you have to look at shit like that and like understand what your objective is. And this game, the answer is clearly like you need to rat. So like here, what are we doing? What's going on here? Okay, once again, you guys are ignoring tombstones, like... This is like the fight we want, right? Okay. So you're 
he just died there. God, he gets blown the fuck up. Might be worth TPing into this. I think you. I think it probably would've been worth it. Drop acid. Drop acid. Drop acid. Okay. I think you could have dropped acid a little earlier. Okay. Now you're beginning to overextend. You guys are fighting underneath a fucking tombstone, and you're about to get punished because you have like five zombies on you alone. Yeah. Okay. So this is just a classic case of like over. This is the fight I was talking about. You see how they jumped in there, and you guys traded even. Like you killed their bristle back. You killed this guy who were both on sprees. Look, 700 gold, 800 gold. So your dark just got rich, man. He just got a ton of money, and like what you did was you overextended. Like you have to know when to call when to call movements off. And like it's easy to get caught up in the moment, but like that's what you have to do if you want to improve and like play better and like win a game. Like this is the stuff you have to know. So one, your acid spray was dropped here late. You could have dropped it. Uh, maybe that's, I actually didn't check your channel time on that. Maybe you couldn't. So what I, you should have ulted immediately so you can get to this fight quicker. You should have thrown down the acid spray before dr throwing that because you had three seconds to act. Okay, here. Oh, it's tough. Okay, you have to call back way before that. Like you, you your dark seer is being an idiot here, and your PA. They're really far ahead. But like you're isolated, and you guys are surrounded by zombies. Like you could have killed. You can also kill this tombstone and like like two seconds of effort and instead you die so it's it's like rough to like call this but just know like if you're fighting outside of your base you're not in the best of shape like she should even probably be I don't know I'd be really tempted to go for that if I were her too like this dark seer needs to not be here just dies to zombies you you functionally die to zombies see an axe doesn't have an axe Really? Not leveling decay? Oh, Fucking I Christ. But yeah, like this... Like this is a less questionable fight than this one. But this one is where it like puts you in really bad shape. Uh, that death maybe could have been avoided by just not being there in the first place. As we said, like I, like I said this a few minutes ago. If you take defensive fights, your team can still win. Like, pretty easily. And you just need to get to the point where you have, like, Manta Radiance. But now it's been five minutes since you've gotten your Radiance, and you've gotten a Vit Booster. Like, that's not acceptable. You should be getting about a thousand gold a minute after you get your Radiance. I guess when you get Radiance Travel, that's when it really kicks up. But getting, like, 800 plus gold a minute is not, like, a tall order or anything. So your next item should come pretty damn quick. Like, I had... The way the games usually play out is you should end up with like once you have the manta and like the travels and octarine, you're probably farming fifteen hundred gold a minute, maybe even more, maybe even like sixteen or eighteen. But like before that, like your farming's on like hits like notches, right? Like each time you hit like a certain point your farming increases exponentially. The first one's the Radiance, then the Manta lets you farm, or the Travels let you farm in more places. The Manta's gonna let you farm in much more dangerous places and survive a little bit. And the Octarine lets you do it all like way, way faster. But yeah, so that was another overextension. But like your team's still holding on. But like imagine if you didn't die like these last three times. That first death. And like the first death could have been avoided. Like we can look at this and say, I think all your deaths should have been avoided, actually. So if we go over it, we talked about how you could have used the Illusion Rune to survive this kill, and how the Jug also fucked up. If you had a Poor Man's Shield, or if you um, popped your Illusion Rune at the right time, you probably would have lived there. Uh, what's the second death? The second death is right here, where you force your team into a bad engagement that you guys get like 5-0 wiped on, or 4-0 wiped. It's 4 or 5, I can't remember which. Like that was really bad. Your next death is here. 
uh, the fight you shouldn't have been at, where you should have been farming and slip pushing. Because there's a lot of gold on the map. Just taking these towers will net your team a ton of gold to get them to, like, their next point. It might be worth telling your anti-man just to get, like, a Vlad's or something, too. The Vlad's helps your team a lot. He's doing the right thing. Armlet's really good on CK. You guys are so far behind, though. But, like, you could feel, like, even at this fight and... I think there's another fight like that skirmish in the woods like you have the capabilities to win fights like ck's ult is fucking crazy strong um okay that's 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 dumb should have this maxed y'all you have six second cooldown fucking crazy not to have that maxed <clears throat> pa can crit monger someone anti-mage could eventually get to the point where he can rat and they have like nothing to do about it I guess the fed spirit breaker is a bit of a pain in the ass. Once he gets a mantle, like the spirit breaker is gonna have a hard time just killing him by himself. Unless he gets, I don't even think you can get unlucky enough, honestly. If you have the manta, because he only gets like the two. Maybe it would be the spirit breaker would have to be ungodly far ahead to kill an anti mage who has a manta. But yeah, like this game, like it should still feel winnable, and it's gonna be like you guys really like throwing a fight out of position. To like lose this, and like you're you are at a huge deficit, but like you can definitely overcome this. Like they should be feeling some degree of pressure to win. <laughs> like and here's what you need to be doing for the last six minutes. Once again, your team is fighting so far forward. Are we getting destroyed here? It looks like we're getting destroyed here. Like once again, all you can do is like communicate this. Like, you can't, like, tell your team, like, hey, you can't be doing that. And you being here is, like, telling them, like, it's okay to do this. He needs to be looking at his void targets. The only good void target is, like, the undying. I think he voids her with her full mana. Okay. So now, once again, you're fighting into a tombstone that you guys aren't touching. And the tombstone stone is just destroying you. Like, this is... This guy at 3, 3 is 16, 19. It's down half their kills. He's the reason they won the last, like, two or three engagements. Okay, you didn't die here, but was it, what did it matter? So you, you don't get the... Tr it doesn't really get the treads until later, but, like, what's the point now? Like, you should just get the travels. Here, like, I don't know. Is it even worth sitting here with acid? I guess maybe. It's so rough though. Like you guys just shouldn't have taken that fight. And while your team was taking that fight, you should have been taking this tower. And then maybe you'll feel a little more comfortable losing this. Because you standing here didn't stop them from taking that. Like only if they go for a tier 2 can your team really punish them at this point. So that was the fight where you like lost the game. And there were a bunch of other bad decisions that you made. But like joining your team for that fight was one of them. It didn't change shit. You're at 120 creeps at 23 minutes in. I think you had like 70 at 11 minutes, I want to say. Which means you've put together 60 creeps over the course of 12 minutes on an alchemist with a radiance. Which is like not what you want to be doing. Once again, you guys are losing to tombstone. Kill the fucking tombstone, holy shit. If your team's not going to do it, then you have to do it. Like, how do you guys not respect tombstone to the point where you run the fuck past it? It slows you, like, through BKB, it slows. I'm 90% on that one. Here you back up and you just kill the tombstone. Oh, okay, it just went up. Okay, I won't blame you that time. But, like, still, this is overextending. Stop pushing out. Like, you just need to take the defense. If, if every single one of your fights has been defensive, you would have won this game. And like that's part that's on your team for not playing correctly, and that's on you for not doing what you had to do. Like even if your team's bitching at you, you just fucking mute them and do alchemist things. Like if that team's bitching at me, like oh alchemist is just doing nothing, he's AFK racing, and then like five minutes or like two to five minutes later, we win a huge fight because I have a fucking finish manta style and I TP back to a defensive fight. Like it's not it's not rocket science and it's not fucking hard. But like it's just knowing what. Why is this open? you buying things? I don't think you are. Okay. Alright. I, I don't know what the deal with that was. 
Let's get a Yasha now. Like, you should be getting the travels. Like, 500%. Because the travels are going to let you, like, push really aggressively and, like, TP home and, like, get into aggressive postures and pushing. This SMY is a garbage pur purchase. And, like, an. Like, bad itemization is such. Why is this open? This thing needs to go away. Hold on. Hold on. We're solving this problem right now. This is another fight outside your base. Like, why are you engaging them outside your base? Is this like a foreign concept? I have no idea why this won't close. Do you, do you just have it open this whole time? Is that one? Okay. SNY was retarded. What is an SNY doing for you at this point? It gives you like a few more armor and some more move speed, but like a Manta lets you rat it a little more. It lets you disjoint that too. Yeah, it didn't do shit. Yeah. Okay, so this game is basically over. So just to summarize, here's your problem. One, you didn't think through your items or your place in the game. Okay. So first of all, when like you're landing, we'll even go back earlier. Was the Alchemist pick the right pick when you have a PA and an a and an AM? The answer is probably no. Um, these two morons picked after you, but even so. Uh, like, you still could have made it work, though. Like, your team got really far behind. But if you did what you were supposed to do, I think this game was winnable. Like, we pointed to multiple engagements where you guys won when you shouldn't have been winning engagements at all. <coughs> but constantly taking fights inside your base is a problem. So, this first thing, did you need an Alchemist pick? Honestly, if it's pubs, whatever, fuck it. But, like, then if you're, if you're like, I'm going to play Alchemist and I'm going to grind through with just, like, the Radiance, Octavian, and Rat them, then do it. I don't, I don't give a fuck if there's an Anti-Mage or a PA. And clearly you didn't either since you went for a Radiance in a pub game uh, in, like, this given situation. So if you already acknowledge you didn't care, then just engage Rat mode. Like, why did you keep trying to fight at, like, weird places and do dumb things? Like, you farmed, let's see, in 15 minutes you got... Less than 100 creeps. I want to say 80 creeps on an alchemist. It's disgusting. Should be getting way more than that. Just with the travels. Second of all, like, your items aren't thought through. Like, the Radiance Rush is fine. But then you get travels, and then Manta. Or Manta, then travels. Either one. So getting this casual vid booster into, like, SNY. It just... It's like, you're just not thinking things through. Like, having that faster... You could have afforded travels for a while, and you didn't get them. And, like, the travels will let you rat a little more. Maybe make them like TP and waste their time, and then you TP back and you end up in a 5 on 4 fight, which might let you win stuff. Um, you enable your team to go into dumb positions like fighting here, fighting here. That one you start, that's your fault. Uh, overextending here past a tombstone for what seemed like the third or fourth time. Um, I feel like there was another very similar fight there where you also overextended, but I'm forgetting. <laughs> But yeah, so you need to, like, learn to play more concerted. And it definitely hurts against the Spear Breaker. I fucking hate playing against Spear Breakers. Because the way I farm, or the way you want to... When you play heroes, you want to farm with, like, Reckless Abandon. <laughs> Having that Spear Breaker who can, like, track you all over the map is, like, the biggest fucking pain in the ass. Um. <clears throat> <clears throat> but, like, don't abandon the plan. Like, you saw, like, you could have won defensive fights. So just being able to look at a game see what's going to win the game for you, uh, and then being able to do that. Even if your team's not on the same page, like knowing that, hey, if I just if you try and communicate to them and then you do your part, that's all you can do in a game. And then you know like you did everything you could. But in this case, you didn't. You enabled them. You fought outside, you fought outside of your base when your team was down like 25 kills and like 15k. Like You guys were so far behind this whole game. Like, you see these, like, bumps? You were still able to get kills. So imagine if those kills and those fights were taken inside your base when they're getting hit by, like, tier 3 towers and they're fighting uphill and they don't have good vision and you guys have perfect vision. Like, just imagine that. And where those tombstones can't go, like, unnoticed because they're going to plant it in your base where you have structure vision. But, yeah, so that, that's stuff you got to think about. Um, 
think that about concludes that like you didn't even get to a point where you were like abusing farming pants. Like that's a lot of things I'll see. I'll, I'll like, oh, this person's creeping okay, and then they get their major farming item, and then they just don't farm. Like, what was the point? Like, yeah, the radians can fight too. And it's like a good fighting item, but like you need more. And if you want to fight, there's better things to fight with. It's not a bad fighting item. It's just it gives you no HP. Um, all right. So that about kind of concludes what we can gain from this game. So just to summarize. Uh, it probably wasn't the pick into this, but if you decide you just want to grind it out, then cool, just stick to it and do the standard Radiance, Manta, Octarine build with Travels. You deviated from the plan and then took bad fights and didn't ever get your farm up. Since you didn't actually farm, like, what's the point? Like, yeah, you're at the top of the net worth by, like, 700 gold, but, like, Alchemist needs to be, like, doubling the net worth of, like, the next person for you to be in, like, a really advantageous position. Um, alright, cool, that about ends this one, um, so, yeah, go into the game of the plan, execute that plan, and even if your team is being thick-headed, just keep doing it, um, mm, yeah, that's about it.